All right, uh, Mr. Johnson, just for your benefit, uh, I've had a bench conference with the attorneys. Your attorney can, uh, will get together with you and explain uh, the outcome of that bench conference. At this point, I'm just gonna leave you set for the July 2nd VOP status hearing. I explained to your lawyer if he wants to set it for a different date and time so I can take more time with the case, that's fine. He'll just need to coordinate that with my assistant. Do you understand? Uh, yes, sir. All right, your lawyer will be talking to you. Roger. All right, that's the order of the court. Good morning, Judge. I right, have a good morning. Morning, Mr. Kelly. Good morning, Judge. Are you ready on what you have? Are they uh, in custody or out of custody? Uh, All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, come on up. And let's see. So let's go ahead and talk about, uh, well, are we ready to go on Tyrone Rosario? Okay. Yes, I, I believe, actually, Mr. Knopf would probably take about two seconds. Okay. Um, well, let's just go ahead and take care of, this looks like Mr. Rosario up here. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and swear Mr. Rosario in. Raise your right hand, please. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you guide. Yes. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Tyrone Rosario, 1991, September 13th. All right. Sir, your attorney, Mr. Kelly, is present in the courtroom along with the prosecutor assigned to the case. We're here today for a bond hearing. Judge, we're not here for a bond hearing. Okay. Uh, we had withdrawn the bond hearing last week. Okay. We're here for a pretrial detention hearing. Okay. That's correct. All right. I'm sorry, sir. We're actually here for something called a motion for pretrial detention filed by the state attorney's office. So at this point, Mr. Kelly, does your client have a bond? No. Okay. Um, and Mr. Barrett, are you ready to go on the motion for pretrial uh, detention? I am, Your Honor. All right. What would you like to present to the court? First, I want to get my TV working. <laughs> Um, Your Honor, first I have a copy of the motion for pretrial detention. I've got it pulled up on the computer, so I don't need a physical copy. I have a uh, sworn statement by a Deputy Mesquita, a statement by a Deputy Wilkie, a statement by a Deputy or Detective Lorenzano, a statement by a Deputy Vega, a statement by Deputy Martinez Irizarry, statement by Deputy Martinez. I have a report from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement um, by Alyssa McLaughlin. And then I have sworn statements from Joseph Rivera, Andrea Pino, uh, Roberto Bailey. And I apologize, I think my witness still has her written statement. And a written statement by Catherine Rivera Rivera. Additionally, I have photographs. Um, that are listed in discovery as pages 90 to 95 of the discovery and photographs that are listed as pages 8, 108 to 109 of the discovery. In addition to that, I would be, I'll be presenting to the court a disc. On the disc, I'll be playing portions of an interview of Mr. Rosario, surveillance video that captured part of the incident. Um, the, there's uh, the interview on the disc of Mr. Navarro's Coto, the victim, and there are a couple of jail calls made by Mr. Rosario. And then finally, Your Honor, I have two witnesses to present who will require a Spanish interpreter. All right. So um, then let's do this. Mr. Barrett, any guess how long your presentation of all this information is going to take? Um, depending on how long it takes the court to read these documents. Um, I, don't, I don't see presenting the portions of the video that I'm going to present are going to be short. Um, I think the testimony is going to be very short, so no more than 15 minutes. All right, let me do this. Um, I suspect I've got a number of very quick matters. Um, in just 
on the off chance that Mr. Kelly has some cross-examination that you're not factoring in. I'd like to see if I can't get the quick matters out of here just to reduce the number of people in the courtroom and let the jail get some people back. So Mr. Rosario, I'm gonna uh, recall your case in a few minutes. I'm gonna take care of some other matters and then we will proceed forward, all right? Okay. All right, so let's have Mr. Rosario grab a seat and we'll recall his case in a couple of minutes. Ms. Cobb. Excuse me, Judge, look, on, on uh, Tyrone Rosario, the Public Defender's Office was previously appointed to represent him on his case. Mr. Kelly has since filed a notice of appearance. Uh, may I look for my oral motion to withdraw from this case? I will. It's possible that I signed an order yesterday, but that's fine. Okay. The Thank you. court minutes will reflect PD's allowed to withdraw. Okay, so Ms. Cobb, what else do you have on the jail docket this morning? Your Honor, I have uh, Mr. Robert Taylor. He has three cases that were um, set for today from pretrial conference. Um, the negotiations between the state and I have failed. And so um, I don't want to put this on the trial docket. I believe, I don't want to set it on the trial docket because I know it's not going to be a trial. Okay. What I'd rather do is ask the court for more time so that I could pr prepare for a um, plea to the bench. Okay. Um, so let's do this for control purposes. I'd like to have it on a pretrial docket somewhere. Yes, sir. Um, if you want to continue to take more time, why don't I give you, well, let me ask you, if I give you July 28th, do you think that's going to be, as a pretrial date, sufficient time for you to be prepared and find a date for a plea? Yes, sir. All right, in Mr. Taylor's three cases, I'm gonna grant a motion to continue. I'm gonna set a new pretrial conference of July 28th. 29th. It's 29th. Excuse me, July 29th, thank you, Madam Clerk. And, uh, for control purposes, a trial date starting Monday, August 10th. And Ms. Cobb, when you're ready, I'll just leave it to you to coordinate with my judicial assistant a date and time for a plea uh, sentencing hearing and imposition of sentence. Thank you, that's okay. all I have, sir. All right, have a good day. All right, uh, Ms. Roses, I'm just gonna work my way down the line. So as far as, do you have anything on the jail docket? Yes, I do. Um, I have a plea and then I have a, um, a bond motion. But okay. I know that Ms. Chrysler has some shorter matters. If she, you know. Are they on the jail docket or the out of jail? Out of jail. Oh, okay. uh, I'd like to get the jail done so that they can get the inmates out and we can shut off the video link uh, and then we'll take care of in court uh, matters. Although we'll do Mr. Rosario last. So Ms. Rosas, tell me which one you want to handle first. Okay. So first we can handle Angelique Hazley. She's on page one of the docket. Okay. Um, it's two cases set for a plea date certain. Okay. Um, I submitted the plea forms. Already. Okay. Let's go ahead and swear Miss Hazley in. Raise your right hand, please. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Good morning, ma'am. Tell me your name. My name is Angelique Hazley. Birthday is June 6, 1994, sir. All right, ma'am. Uh, you have two cases before the court. Yes, in... sir. Well, I don't see the case number. First case, I'm not showing the case number. Uh, you're charged with petty theft, having two prior theft convictions. That's a third-degree felony. Punishable up to five years in prison. It looks like that's case number 2020. CF 532, and then you have a second case, 20 CF 708. In that case, you're also charged with petty theft, having two prior theft convictions. Again, that's a third degree felony, punishable to five years in prison. Do you understand the crimes you're charged with in these two cases and the maximum possible punishment you're facing? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, your attorney, Ms. Roses, is here in the courtroom. Ms. Roses, how does she want to resolve these two cases? Your Honor, Ms. Paisley will enter pleas of no contest. In both cases, um, the agreed upon sentence is an adjudication of guilt, eight months in the Osceola County Jail and court costs, and both cases are to run concurrent to each other. State, is this the agreement? That is the agreement. Ms. Hazley, is this how you want to resolve your two cases? Um, I was, uh, can I speak with you, Judge, when I, may I ask you a question? Well, your lawyer is here. 
Typically, I would have you tell your lawyer the question, okay. and then your lawyer would ask me the question, because sometimes what you think is a good question or a good comment, your lawyer might actually think is a bad idea. Ms. Okay. Roses, do you have any idea what your client might be wanting to ask the court? Yes, Your Honor. So prior to the, today, we set this for a plea conference slash plea date certain because she was interested in possibly pleading to the bench. Um, I spoke to the state prior to um, uh, to well, this morning, and um, the state indicated basically that if we went through with the plea conference that they would revoke the offer. So I explained that to Ms. Hazley, and Ms. Hazley said that she would um, accept the state's offer, um, but I know that in the back of her head, you know, she, she kind of did want to do the plea conference, but, uh, you know. So Ms. Hazley, let me just tell you this. Yes. Um, without getting too deep into it, just looking quickly at your record, it's unlikely as I sit here that I can imagine what your lawyer or you would tell me that would cause me to think that less than eight months is an appropriate sentence. So I think your options at this point are just take the state's eight months. If you, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. But if you pled to the bench, you could still get eight months or it could be worse afterwards. And if you go that way, you don't get to then tell me at the end, oh, judge, yours is worse than the state's. Can I go back and take the state's? So really the option is take the state's offer if you don't want to do that and you want to plea straight to the bench. I'm not making any promises that it's going to be any better than the state. And I want to caution you, it could be worse than what the state offered. So does that kind of answer your question? Yes, sir. And have you decided the best thing to do is just take the state's offer so you know what the outcome is? Yes, sir. All right. As you stand here today, are you under the influence of any drugs, no, alcohol, sir. or other medication? Just, just let me finish before you answer, please. Uh, have you ever been treated for a mental illness, emotional disturbance, or are you suffering from such at this time? Yes. What was that condition? Bipolar disorder. Do you, do you feel like that condition is currently affecting or impairing your ability to make this decision? No, sir. All right. Do you read and understand the English language? Yes, sir. In each of your cases, your attorney has given me a document called a plea form. The forms are identical. The only difference is there's one with each case number on it. Each of them has your name on it. Each of them has all your rights. Each of them has the resolution. Um, did you go over those forms? Yes, I did. Did you have an opportunity to speak to Ms. Roses about the rights you have and the rights you're giving up in these forms? Yes, Your Honor. Did you initial each paragraph indicating you understood it? Yes. Did you sign the last page? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that in each case you're entering a plea, which means there won't be a trial, and I will sentence you this morning? Yes, Your Honor. Has anyone forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No, sir. Other than what we've discussed here in court, has anyone made any other promises to you about the sentence you'd receive in this case? No, sir. Are you satisfied with the work Ms. Roses has done in handling your two cases? No. And how are, what has she uh, done or not done that you objected to? I think I, um, I think due to the petty offenses that should, it should have been less time, you know, but um, under the circumstances of my priors, I guess, uh, you guys make that call. Well, uh, it sounds like the lawyer you're probably really unhappy with is the prosecutor who offered you eight months. Exactly. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, well, you don't get to pick your prosecutor and you don't get to uh, uh, change how they view the case. Is there anything that you wanted Miss Roses to do other than get you a better deal that she failed to do? No, sir. All right. Uh, do you understand, ma'am, if you were not a citizen of the United States, entry of this plea would result in your deportation? Yes. Okay. State factual basis for each of the two theft cases? As to 20 CF 532, if this went to trial, the state would prove that on or about January 16th of 2020, the defendant was inside of Publix in Osceola County, Florida. There, the defendant was seen by a store employee concealing $133.75 worth of merchandise and then exiting the store without paying. The defendant was stopped by law enforcement and the merchandise was recovered. The defendant was previously convicted of theft on July 18th of 2019 and January 28th of 2019. In case 20 CF 708, if this went to trial, the state would prove that on or about November 5th of 2019, 
The defendant was inside a family dollar store in Osceola County, Florida with another person. There, the defendant selected $8.10 worth of merchandise. When she was asked to pay for the merchandise, the defendant walked out of the store without paying. The defendant was previously convicted of theft on July 18th of 2019 and January 28th of 2019. Any objection to the factual basis in either case, Ms. Roses? No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Hazley, I'm gonna accept each of your pleas. I find you're alert, intelligent. Your pleas are freely and voluntarily entered. You understand the nature of the charges against you and you're represented by competent counsel with whom you're satisfied. I also find a factual basis for the acceptance of each plea uh, in each case. Is there any legal reason why sentence should not be imposed, Ms. Roses? No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Hazley, in each of your two cases, I'm gonna adjudicate you guilty. In case number 532, I'm gonna sentence you to eight months in the Osceola County Jail with credit for 115 days time served. I'll also order that you pay any statutorily required fines, fees, or costs. In case number 20, CF708, I'll adjudicate you guilty. I will sentence you to eight months in the Osceola County Jail with credit for 86 days time served. The sentences on these two cases will run concurrent with each other. Again, I'll order all statutorily required costs in case number 708. Madam Clerk, can you announce the cost by case number? Yes, in case number 20 CF 532, court cost is $415 with a $3 teen court fee, $100 cost of prosecution, $100 PD lien, $100 PD assistance fee for a total of $718. And in case number 20 CF708, court cost is $415 with a $3 teen court fee, $100 cost of prosecution, $100 PD lien, $100 PD assistance fee, and both totals combined are $1,436. Listen carefully, ma'am. I'm going to order that the cost on your two cases be consolidated into one payment. I'm going to order within 90 days of your release from custody that you contact the clerk of the court here in Osceola County and begin making payments at a minimum rate of $30 a month towards your cost until your costs are paid in full. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Ms. Roses, anything else? No, Your Honor. State, anything else? Nothing further from the state. Madam Clerk, anything else? No, sir. That's the judgment and sentence uh, on Ms. Hazley's two cases. She's remained in the custody of the Osceola County Jail to serve the balance of her sentence. Good luck to you, ma'am. And tell me about your uh, bond hearing, Ms. Rosas. It's um, page, well, page three of the docket um, on your honors docket. Charles Shea, he has two cases um, set for a motion to set bond on a violation of probation. Okay. Let's have Charles Shea come up. Let's, let's go ahead and swear him in. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case. Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self you God? Good morning, sir. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Mr. Shea, uh, you previously were placed on probation in one case for grand theft in the third degree, in the other case for VOP, uh, or the other case dealing in stolen property, and grand theft in the third degree. It's now been alleged that you violated both probations. You're currently in custody, I believe, on a no bond warrant. Is that correct, Ms. Roses? Yes, Your Honor. Your attorney, Ms. Roses, is here in the courtroom and she's going to present evidence and ask me to set a bond. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Ms. Roses, do you want to inquire of your client? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Um, Mr. Shea, how long have you lived in Central Florida? 30 years ago. Okay. Um, do you have any family members in the area? Um, yes, I got two brothers and a mom. Okay. Um, if you were released, would you have a place to live? Yes. Where would you live? Um, 3204 Panama Court and New Deal Court, right here in the city. Okay. And who all lives there? Just my mom. Okay. Um, prior to your arrest, did you have a job? Yes, full time. Okay. Um, where did you work? I'm an excavator operator for Virginia Davis on a pipe crew. Okay. And for how long did you work for that company? Um, eight years. Okay. Um, how much did you make working there? Uh, $27. Okay. Um, uh, are there any other businesses that you're involved with other than um, that construction company? Um, I, I'm part of Ultimate Catering. Um, we, do, we do weddings and events and we do stuff like that. But we haven't been doing that since we started. But I know okay. hurricanes come out and we do a lot of PBO. Right now. Okay. 
Okay. Um, what is your um, position at Ultimate Catering? Like, what's your role in that organization? Um, I'm on the catering side, the food side. Okay. Um, all right. Do you have um, any children? Yes, 13 year old. Okay. And where does she live right now? She lives with her mom, and she lives in Oklahoma City. How long has she lived in Oklahoma City? I would say five years. Okay. How often do you see her? I give her every Christmas and every summer. Sorry. Do you pay any child support? Yes, 121 a week. Okay. And also I pay her insurance. All right. What kind of insurance? Um, it's, um, her insurance for medical and health. Okay. Medical, All right. And um, before you were arrested, uh, were you keeping up with your child support payments? Yes. Okay. And did your payments stop when you were arrested? No. Okay. So what is the status of your payments right now? Right now, we're behind because I'm not able to pay a work right now. Mm, okay. Um, all right. Are you part of any other community organizations or churches? Um, the Rock Church on 1917. I'm part of the um, John, Big Jones for the Youth Band. Okay. How long have you been a part of that church? About three years. Okay. Um, Mr. Shea, have you ever failed to appear? No. Okay. In the past, have you ever had any issues getting to court? No. Okay. If you were released, do you know how you would get to court? Um, I would either take a company truck or I would get a ride there. Okay. And uh, will you come to all of your future court dates? Yes, it's all Okay. And um, where would you want to receive your notices at? Um, the same address, 3204. Okay. And if that address changes, um, would you let the court know? Yes. Okay. And I also know how to check online. I also put the court, so I have to check online as well. All right. And what is the maximum bond that you can afford? Um, I was hoping to you know, ask for PCR on these cases. I know I got a bond on my new case, which I can bond out on that. Okay. And, and what? How much is the bond in the new case? Um, Two thousand. Okay. Um, I've I've no, actually. Sorry, Mr. Shea. Um, so. Uh, you said that you live with your mom, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any reason why it would be important for you to be home with your mom right now? Um, yes. Um, I know a hurricane season started, and um, I'm pretty much, she has a lot of back problems. I, I'm pretty much the one that can help her with the house and put boards up and get her piece of life. So she doesn't have anybody else. My brothers are working out of town right now, so. Okay. Um, all right, and in your new case in 20 CF 1377, um, you understand that there's a no contact order in that case, right? Yes, sir. So um, what does that mean to you, to have no contact? Um, to not contact or try to get a hold of any third parties or messenger or any no contact, no kind of no person, I'll get a job or call. Okay, and just to be clear, um, the person that you have the no contact order does not live at 3204 Pembroke Court, correct? No. Okay, I have no further questions. I have no questions. All right, uh, any additional witnesses, Ms. Roses? No, Your Honor. All right, brief argument, Ms. Roses? Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, we believe that based on the testimony today, Mr. Shea has demonstrated that he has significant ties to the community and that he is not a flight risk. Um, he testified that he has lived in Central Florida for 30 years, which would be his whole life. He has several family, family members in the area, including his mother and his two siblings. Um, he would have a stable place to live if he were released. He would be living at 3204 Pembroke Court with his mother. Um, that prior to his arrest, he was gainfully employed with junior construction. Um, he also worked for a catering company. Um, he has a minor child who relies on him for financial support. He testified as to the amount of child support that he uh, has to pay every week. Uh, however, he has not been able to pay that because he's been in jail. Uh, he also testified that he is a member of the Rock Church and has been for three years. Um, he testified that he has never failed to appear for court. He's never had any issue getting to court in the past. 
um, that he has a way to get to court if he were released, and um, that he understands what the no contact order means. He understands that he has to come to court in the future and that he has to let the, no, the court know if his address changes. Um, so uh, because Mr. Shea already has a $2,000 bond in his new law case, um, that's why we are asking for pretrial release in these two cases because um, he cannot afford um, anything other than what he already has for a bond. I'm going to deny the request to set bond in each of the two cases. In reviewing the cases, it appears that this is a second violation. I'm also concerned about the factual allegations of a violent felony offense committed while he was on probation. Do we have a, a status date for each of his two cases? Yes, Your Honor. It's in August. All right. He will remain as previously docked, uh, docketed. Mr. Shea will remain in the Osceola County Jail pending disposition of his violation. All right, Ms. Roses, anything else on the jail docket? No, Your Honor, I don't have anything else. All right, have a good day. Okay. Oh, well, you can stay. It's a public courtroom, or you can go. Okay. Mr. Johnson. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, anything on the jail docket? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So what we'll do is we'll get uh, Mr. Johnson done, and then Ms. Chrysler, I will take your out-of-custody cases, and then I'll circle back and finish with Mr. Kelly, all right? All right, Mr. Johnson, tell me who you have first. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on page one of the docket, I have Adam Lee Rogers in 20 CF 1454. Okay. He's set for arraignment? Yes, Your Honor. And he is in custody. Okay. Let's go ahead and swear Mr. Rogers in. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Adam Lee Rogers, September 17, 1999. Mr. Rogers, the state attorney's office has filed a information in your case. Uh, this looks like an upgrade of 2020 MM1096. They're now charging you in count one with petty theft, having two prior theft convictions, a third degree felony, punishable up to five years in prison. Count two is resisting merchandise recovery, a first degree misdemeanor punishable to a year in the county jail. And count three, resisting officer without violence, a first degree misdemeanor punishable to a year in the county jail. The Office of the Public Defender has been appointed to represent you. Mr. Johnson, what plea do you want to enter on behalf of the defendant? Uh, this morning it'd be a not guilty honor. We did receive an offer from the state. However, I need to be able to convey it and talk about it. Okay. Uh, just look at something. All right, it looks like, regardless of the Supreme Court's suspension of the speedy trial window, this case, speedy trial, wouldn't run until sometime in October. Does that sound right? Even, even if it wasn't told? I believe it does. All right, so here's what we'll do. Um, I'm going to set pretrial conference on his case for Wednesday, September 2nd in a trial period that starts September 14th. If he wants to enter a plea, then just docket it earlier and bring the case in. Yes, Your Honor. All right, that's the order of the court in regards to Mr. Rogers. Okay. Um, will I be able to talk to my public defender anytime soon? Because I didn't know that yes, about this. Yeah. Okay, so he, uh, whatever the system is they have to communicate with you, he's gonna reach out to you and y'all can talk about the case, all right? Uh, okay, all okay. Next, Mr. Johnson. The next case I have is on page two of the docket, uh, of our docket. Um, it's with Cassandra Osborne in 12 CF 3445. It's a motion to set bond on a VOP. All right, uh, let's go ahead and swear Ms. Osborne in. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you guys. Yes. Morning, ma'am. Tell me your uh, name and date of birth. Ms. Osborne. All right, Ms. Osborne, it looks like you previously were placed on probation for, violate, uh, for trafficking in four grams or more of oxycodone. It's now been alleged that you violated probation. Mr. Johnson, uh, I'm assuming that the... VOP warrant has a no bond status at this time? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. 
Uh, you, do you want to inquire of your client? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Uh, good morning, Mr. Osborne. Um, just a couple questions. Uh, first things first, uh, how long have you lived in the Central Florida area? 30 years. Okay, and is that basically your entire life? Entire life. Okay. And at this point in time, uh, where are you currently, if you were released, where could you currently reside? 15 years ago. Okay, and is that where you were living prior to being in custody? Yes. Okay, were you living with anybody there? Yes. Who were you living with? My boyfriend and my four kids. Okay, uh, you said four kids. Uh, how old are your children? 14, 9, 2, and 1. And you said they uh, live with you, right? Yes. So you uh, provide for your children? Yes. Okay. Um, and in providing for your children, um, did you have any jobs before being incarcerated? Yes. Or in being in custody? Uh, where were you working? It's uh, third Sunday between. Okay. And um, before uh, the Third Sunday Cuisine, uh, were you working anywhere else as well? Um, uh, no, I was not. Okay. Okay. And, okay. So upon, if you were able to be released in this case, would you be able to go to the Third Sunday Cuisine job? It'd be Third Sunday Cuisine and uh, Perkins. Okay. And uh, what would you do at Third Sunday Cuisine in Perkins? What, what's your... I'd be working the business, the manager. Okay. Um, also, uh, are you currently uh, seeking any education on the outside? Are you in school at all? Um, I'm trying to... I just signed up for the GED classes. Okay. And that's at the GED program. I know we spoke uh, that's on Simpson Road. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Um, so would that be the Adult Learning Center of Osceola? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, your bond was previously set at uh, $1,500 in this case. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. But as of right now, you're held on a no bond status? Correct. Okay. Uh, if you were released, would you uh, return to any court dates we had in this case? Yes. Okay, and actually, as a matter of fact, I see uh, you've been dealing with this case since 2012, is that right? Correct. And have you ever failed to appear for a court date in any of those eight years of dealing with this case? No. Okay. Uh, no further questions right now. Uh, Mr. Baird, cross-examination. Oh. No cross. All right. Any additional witnesses? Uh, no, Your Honor. Um, I did have family members that were uh, hoping to be able to come in today, but... They weren't able to make it. Um, All right. one Mr. Johnson, argument in favor of uh, granting a bond? Yes, Your Honor. Um, in terms of this case, uh, the violation of probation right now um, is based on new law offenses. However, those new law offenses are uh, nonviolent violations. Um, Ms. Osborne has previously uh, bonded out of jail in this case. Um, when it was originally going through and as we've been dealing with violation of probation and during that time uh, any court date that was set she's come to um, she hasn't previously failed to appear she does have uh, four children and her boyfriend who she currently lives with in central florida she's lived here for her whole life she has a managerial position that she can go to uh, upon uh, exiting the jail if she was able to um, she's seeking her GED. In terms of ties to the community, there's, there's a substantial amount here. There's almost no flight risk here whatsoever because she's seeking uh, education. She's continuing her employment, and she's providing for her family that all live here at a house in Kissimmee. Um, based on that, I don't believe that uh, Ms. Osborne would fail to appear for any court dates um, that we would be able to... Uh, ensure that she would be able to return if she were bonded out and that uh, given I know that this is zero bonded at this time because of new, uh, new violations however those were not violent in nature so I don't believe she poses a threat to the community as well I, I'm going to deny the request to set bond for the following reasons there are two distinct allegations of violation the first is a curfew violation and the manner in which she was contacted by law enforcement as they were investigating a suspect that she was in proximity to 
who had allegedly committed an armed robbery during the course of that investigation. Now, she wasn't charged with the armed robbery, I understand that. Yes, sir. But she was in violation of her curfew. In addition, she was... All right, Osceola Corrections, your disruptive inmate is succeeding in disrupting my court. So you are welcome to remove her so that we can proceed. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, may I Ma'am, your, your attorney has made the argument. I'm explaining my reasoning. He can talk to you uh, further. The second situation was, uh, and she also, during that first incident, was in possession of a controlled substance. The second circumstance uh, involved a DCF complaint that she may be consuming controlled substances in the presence of the four children that appear to be the important reason for her to get out. Um, that investigation ultimately involved law enforcement coming to the home, eventually making contact with her, and again, recovering controlled substances. My concern is not so much whether she's gonna come back for a status hearing. My concern is whether she'll follow any orders of the court while this situation is pending resolution. So for those reasons, I'm denying the request to set bond. In her case, do we have a date for Ms. Osborne? Uh, yes, Your Honor, in this uh, case, I believe it was uh, July 2nd. Was okay, she'll, she'll remain set for July 2nd. All right, and Mr. Johnson, what else do you have on the jail docket? Uh, the last thing I have uh, in court today is uh, Vicki Wilson on the jail docket and 20 CF 1258 on the last page of the docket. Um, this was set for a uh, mental health status this morning. Um, and dealing with uh, Judge Morgan uh, going through the courtrooms. Um, we were hoping to try and find a uh, location where we could uh, get Miss Wilson, if she were able to get out of custody, she'd be able to go there because um, she does suffer from uh, mental health problems. Uh, however, at this time, um, given the fact that she hasn't been found incompetent to proceed, um, nobody's currently taking anybody uh, right now um on the outside so we're not able to secure that at this time okay um and we had an evaluation where it sounds like competency isn't an issue even though mental health is okay um so at this time i just uh i guess we have no real update as to the mental health status because we're not going to be able to accomplish what we were hoping for let me ask you this does miss wilson have future court dates uh yes your honor let me double check i know she has them i just don't remember pre-trial for 729. All right, good morning, Ms. Wilson. Good morning. Uh, your attorney is here. He's updating me on efforts to see if they can find a placement for you uh, as part of getting you out of custody. So far, uh, because of uh, concerns about coronavirus, they've not succeeded in finding a place yet. I get the sense they're gonna to continue to make efforts to do that. So if they find a place, then they'll reset it in front of me and I will uh, address the situation at the time. You do have a pretrial conference date of July 29th and a trial period of August 10th. So if nothing else, we'll see you back on those dates, okay? Okay, um, so I'm just waiting. If they just need to find somewhere for me to stay. Number one, they need to find a, a place for you to stay. Then number two, they need to come back in front of me and see if I'm comfortable with what conditions we can put on that, on that to let you stay there, okay? All right. All right, so uh, at this point, I'll see, leave you set for pretrial unless your attorney schedules another date, all right? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Anna. That's okay. All okay. Uh, so, Ms. Chrysler, let's take care of Judge Karsten's arraignment docket, and then we will take care of Mr. Kelly's cases. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I have uh, Luis Sanchez, 20 CF 672. Okay. Is he out of custody? Yes, he's out of custody and he's present. Okay. Do any of your clients need an interpreter? This no, Your Honor. Okay. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self of God. Yes. All right. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Uh, Louis Sanchez, 31680. 
Mr. Sanchez, as you stand here, you're currently charged with three crimes. The first is possession of cocaine, a third degree felony, punishable to five years in prison. Count two is possession of drug paraphernalia, a first degree misdemeanor, punishable to a year in the county jail. And count three is criminal mischief. Your case is set in front of Judge Karsten, but I'm covering his docket this morning. The Office of the Public Defender has been appointed to represent you. Ms. Chrysler, what plea do you want to enter on behalf of Mr. Sanchez? Not guilty, Your Honor. We'll enter a plea of not guilty on each of the counts. Do we have court dates for Judge Karsten? Yes, sir. Pre-trial will be July 28th, trial August 6th. All right, sir, your uh, pre-trial conference will be July 28th and your trial period August 6th in front of Judge Karsten. You need to stay in touch with your public defender in case those dates change and to make sure you're ready to proceed. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Ms. Crystal, anything else on his case? No, Your Honor. All right, uh, you'll get, he's gonna get paperwork, correct? You'll get paperwork and you'll be free to go, all right? Okay, next, Ms. Crystal. Uh, Ashley Arroyo, 19 CF 2767. This is a violation of probation arraignment, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and the state and I have reached an agreement as to a resolution. Okay. And you should have the paperwork up there. All right, let's go ahead and swear her in. Do we solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case? Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide? Morning, ma'am. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Ashley Arroyo, March 22, 1997. Ma'am, you previously were placed on probation for three offenses. The first is possession of cocaine. The second is possession of methamphetamine. Those were each third degree felonies. Your third case is possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, it's now been alleged that you have violated probation in those uh, three counts. Do you understand the original charges and the allegation of violation? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Chrysler, how does she want to resolve the violation? It's going to be admit as a best interest plea, reinstate um, with the modification of 50, community, 50 additional community service hours. She will need to do the career readiness within 45 days and all the other conditions that are still um, outstanding. State, is this your agreement? Yes, Your Honor, with all the original terms and conditions, okay. plus the 50 hours community service and the uh, career readiness class within 45 days. All right. So, Mr. Arroyo, is this how you want to resolve your violation? Yes, sir. As you stand here today, are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or other medication? No, Your Honor. You ever been treated for a mental illness, emotional disturbance, or are you suffering from such at this time? No, Your Honor. Do you read and understand the English language? Yes, Your Honor. Your attorney has given me a document called a violation of probation admission form. It's printed front and back. I'm holding it up. Does this form look familiar to you? Yes, sir. Did you go over this form with Ms. Chrysler? Yes, sir. She explained to you all the rights you have and the rights you're giving up by making this admission? Yes. She answer any questions you have? Yes, sir. Did you sign the form? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're admitting you violated probation this morning, which means you won't have a hearing in front of Judge Karsten? Yes, sir. Can you speak up for me? Yes, sir. Has anyone forced, threatened, or coerced you to make this admission? No, Your Honor. Other than what's been discussed here in open court, has anyone made any other promises to you about the sentence you'd receive? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the work Ms. Chrysler's done in handling your case? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand, ma'am, if you are not a citizen of the United States, Entry of this admission would result in your deportation. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Chrysler, are you conceding that the affidavit of violation sets out a factual basis for the court to find your client violated probation? Yes, Your Honor. Ma'am, I'm going to accept your admission. I find you alert and intelligent. Your admission is freely and voluntarily entered. You understand the nature of the charges against you, represented by competent counts with whom you say you're satisfied. I also find a factual basis to believe you violated probation based on the affidavit filed in this case. Is there any legal reason why sentence cannot now be imposed? No, Your Honor. I'm personally known to me. All right. Uh, Ma'am, the court, having accepted your admission, I will find you in violation. I will reinstate you to your original terms and conditions of probation. I'm also going to modify your terms and conditions of probation, adding an additional 50 hours of community service uh, at a minimum rate of eight hours a month. I'm also going to order within 45 days of today's date you enroll in and complete a career readiness course and again all the other original conditions you had remain in effect do you understand yes sir i'm also going to order any statutorily required fines fees or costs associated with this violation and they'll be added to whatever cost you have outstanding madam clerk what would those be there's an additional 100 dollars cost of prosecution 100 dollars pd lien 100 dollars pd assistance fee and she has an outstanding balance of 
$923.39 for a total of $1,223.39. All right, ma'am, uh, I'll order that you pay that amount. Now, are you already on a payment plan? No, Your Honor. And have you been paying anything on your cost? No, sir. All right. Here's what I will do. I'm going to order. Uh, any reason you can't pay $30 a month towards your cost? As of right now, because of the coronavirus, I am unemployed. When was the last time you worked? About two months ago. And when you worked two months ago, what'd you do? I was in the kitchen at Solavita. Okay. And what did you make? $10. Okay. And 40 hour week, roughly? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, if I gave you 60 days from today's date, do you anticipate you'll be employed again? Yes, sir. And do you anticipate that you could then pay $30 a month towards your cost? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, as a condition of your probation, I'll order within 60 days of today's date. You begin making payments at a minimum rate of $30 a month. I'm also going to order that when your probation ends, if you have an unpaid balance, you owe the unpaid balance payable directly to the clerk. I'll order within two working days of your probation ending. You contact the clerk of the court and set up your payment plan continue paying $30 a month. Do you understand? Thank you, Your Honor. I'm trying to avoid a situation where they violate you for right. unpaid court costs at the end of your term. Okay? All right. Anything else to state? No, Your Honor. Anything else, Ms. Chrysler? No, sir. That's the judgment since the court, ma'am. Sit down, get your paperwork. I will. Have you, hold on. Have you been reporting while this is pending? Yes, sir. Then I'll just order that you continue to report as previously directed. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Next, Ms. Chrysler. Your Honor, that's all that we've been appointed to so far. All right. I believe there are others that are out of custody. Is Danielle Harrison present? Yes, sir. Come on up, ma'am. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Let's go ahead and swear her in. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? Yes, I do. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Danielle Harrison, 217-88, sir. All right. Ms. Harrison, you previously were placed on probation for the offense of uh, possession of cocaine. It's now been alleged that you violated your probation. I see that you filled out an application for criminal agent status. The yes. clerks reviewed it and found that you qualify for the service of the public defender. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. I will enter a denial at this time. Uh, Mr. Baird, do you know if this is a case where there's an offer for the defendant to consider this morning? There is, but I don't think it's one that can be accepted today. It would require uh, modification um, with a uh, drug offender probation um, conditions, a curfew of 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., and they uh, and enter and successfully complete an inpatient treatment program such as the Phoenix House. So I don't believe we can do that today. All right. So here's what we'll do, uh, Ms. Harrison. I'm going to enter denial at this time. The Office of Public Defender is appointed to you. I will order before you leave the courtroom, you exchange contact information with Ms. Chrysler, uh, and then you follow up with her office to speak to whichever uh, public defender gets assigned to your case. And I'm gonna set you for the following status date. June 23rd. Uh, you're set for a violation of probation status hearing on June 23rd in front of Judge Karsten, okay? Yes, sir. All right, that's the other court. You'll get paperwork after you talk to Ms. Chrysler and exchange information, get your paperwork, You'll just come back on the 23rd, okay? I have a question. Do I still report as I've been reporting? I'm going to, yes. If yes, you've been reporting, continue to report uh, to your officer pending disposition of the case, okay? Yes, Thank All you. right. Uh, next, I have Ryan Fullwood. Let's go ahead and swear him in. Do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. I think he's got a second. It should be both information should be in there. Okay. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Ryan Fullwood, 81785. Mr. Fullwood, you have two cases before the court. In 20 CF 566, you're charged with possession of methamphetamine, a third degree felony, punishment of five years in prison. Count two is possession of drug paraphernalia, a first degree misdemeanor, punishable to a year in a county jail. Uh, in 20 CF 567, you're charged with one crime, driving with license revoked as a habitual offender, a third degree felony, punishable to five years in prison. I see that you filled out an application for criminal agent status. The clerk has reviewed it and found that you are indigent. 
I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in each of these cases. State, was there an offer for Mr. Fullwood to consider this? There is not today. All right. So, sir, the Office of the Public Defender is appointed to represent you. I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty on each of these cases. I'm going to order before you leave the courtroom today the exchange contact information with Ms. Chrysler and you follow up the public defender's office so you can speak with whichever public defender is assigned to your case. Yes, I'm going to set you for the following court dates in front of Judge Karsten. July 28th, pre-trial and August 6th trial. So your pre-trial conference will be July 28th. Your trial period will start August 6th. You need to be there on each of those days unless your public defender or the court tells you to come to court on a different date. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. The sooner you talk to the public defender, the sooner they can start helping you and preparing the defense of your case. Do you understand? Yes, sir. If you don't ever talk to them on July 28th, all they're going to be able to tell Judge Karsten is, we don't know, never talk to them. And then yes, Judge Karsten may have to take some measures to make sure you can talk to them, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Ms. Chrysler, anything else I need to do with Mr. Fullwood's case? No, Your Honor. All right. That's the order of the court in regards to Mr. Fullwood. You can sit down, talk to the public defender, get your paperwork, and then you're free to go. All right. I believe that's the end of Judge Karsten's arraignment docket. So I think, Mr. Kelly, you have everything left. <clears throat> Let's do this. Let's talk about Dia Dot Noth um, first. Sorry, what was that case number? Uh, I'm not sure I have the case number. Gonzalez's case, or it was the last time I talked to her. Yeah. Was it on the docket for today? I just I don't believe it noticed is. of this yesterday. I, th I think it should have been the add-on, but it may not have made the add-on. Uh, it's just a status hearing uh, on competency. Mr. Baird, we're not going to do any substantive work on it. Yes, wrong. There was a doctor that found him incompetent. Then Duros went and they found him incompetent. Then he went back and saw him again, Duros, and found him competent. In the meantime, I was trying to find a place to put him, but because of the virus, as you heard, it's very difficult to do. Right. Now, I, I have got a place for him to stay, and I have a family member to look after him, but I've got two doctors in conflict, so I guess we need to have a third doctor appointed. Uh, I could talk to Ms. Gonzalez about it. We could figure out what we want to do. Well, um, or in the alternative, th there's nothing that requires a third doctor. Um, sometimes if you share the more recent report with the other doctor, that may affect their opinion. Ultimately, the court has to decide if there's no agreement right. as to whether the defendant is competent or not. My sense of Dr. Duros' report is that he's now currently stabilized and reached a point where his mental health condition is not impairing his understanding of how the system works. Based on what I read, that makes sense to me. You know, he's probably someone that moves in and out of competency depending on medication and other issues. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and put him on a pretrial docket, I believe for July 28th, and I also put a competency status hearing on that date. So that gives you some time to talk to Ms. Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you need to get in court ahead of time, just docket it and come in. We'll talk about it. Other, otherwise, on the 28th, we'll see where we stand. Okay. Okay? All right. So then that leaves us with Mr. Rosario's case. That's right. Let's recall State of Florida versus Tyron Rosario. Sir, you're already under oath. Tell me your name and date of birth again. Tyrone Rosario, 1991, September 13th. Right. Your attorney, Mr. Kelly, is present in the courtroom. As I mentioned earlier this morning, he has withdrawn the motion to set bond, but the state attorney's office has filed a motion for pretrial detention. Uh, Mr. Baird, are you ready to proceed with your presentation? Yes, Your Honor. All right. What do you want to present first? Uh, Your Honor, first, I'm going to be calling uh, two witnesses. Um, they'll require the Spanish interpreter, um, I guess, over the over the intercom system. Let me see if they're available. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Alan Figueroa, State Certified Spanish Court Interpreter. 
Good morning, Mr. Figueroa. This is Judge Wooten down in Osceola County. Um, we're getting ready to start a pretrial detention hearing in case number 2020 CF 1138. The state is going to be calling two witnesses who need your services. Uh, Mr. Baird, can you get over and make sure that when the witnesses arrive, they have the headset? Yes, Judge. And it's possible, Mr. Baird, if the interpreter can't hear them through the headset microphone, you'll need to direct them to uh, the microphone on the lectern. Yes, Which sir. witness do you want to call first? I'll be calling Mr. Victor uh, Navarez Coto. Coto. All right. Let's have Victor Navarez Coto come up. All right, he has the headset on, Mr. Figueroa. Can you confirm he can hear you? Please. He can hear me, Your Honor. Let's go ahead and swear the witness in. If you do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guide. Yes. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name. Victor J. Navarre Cotto. Victor J. Navarre Cotto. Victor J. Navarez Cotto. All right. Mr. Bear, can you get close to a microphone and you may inquire of the witness. Mr. Navarez Cotto, um, we're here today to discuss an incident that happened on, on or about April 17th of 2020, um, an incident where you were injured. What kind of injury did you sustain? I got shot. All right. Do you know who shot you? Sí. Who yes. shot you? Uh, Señor Rosario. Mr. Rosario. Okay. Can you tell us where this happened? In front of my house. Right. Did you want him at your house at that time? No. No. Was he invited to be in front of your house that day? No. No. What happened when he came to your house that day? He got out of his vehicle, he pulled out a gun, and he shot me. Do you remember if he also struck you with the gun? Sí. Yes. Where did he strike you with the gun? En el lado izquierdo de la cabeza. On the left side of my head. As he was doing this, was he saying anything? Él mofándose de que yo me estaba quejando el dolor en la pierna. He was making fun of the fact that I was complaining on the pain on my leg. When did the attack stop? When my wife and my son came out and they got in the middle of us both. Does Mr. Rosario know where you live? Sí. Yes. Are you afraid of Mr. Rosario? Sí. Yes. Are you concerned for your safety if the judge lets him out of jail? Yes. Mine and my family's. Okay. I'm going to show you a short clip of a video, and I want you to take a look at it. It's going to be on the screen here in the courtroom, okay? I'm now publishing a video in court. All right, were you able to see that video that I played here in court? Sí. Yes. All right. I'm pointing to a person with no shirt on on the ground. Who is that? I'm, I'm sorry, counselor. You need to be near the mic. Sorry. My apologies. I'm pointing to a person on the ground without a shirt. Who is that person? 
Is this all you? That's me. Is that after you were already shot? In the video, when it starts, there's a moment that he shoots me and I fall to the floor. I'm sorry, I know the interpreter is going to need a repetition. When it starts the video, it's when he shoots me and I fall to the floor. When the video starts, you can see where he shot me and I fell to the ground. Two other people are come out toward the uh, the person with the gun. Who are the two people that come toward the person with the gun? Mi esposa y mi hijo. My wife and my son. Okay. And all right, I have no further questions about the video. I see here in court today you're using crutches. Is that correct? Correcto. Correct. Okay. Why are you using crutches here in court today? Porque el disparo me rompió la tibia y, la, y el femur. Because the shot broke my tibia and my femur. Okay. Are you still um, feeling pain from that today? No puedo caminar. I'm unable to walk. Do you know how long it'll be, have the doctors told you, before you'll be able to walk properly? Could be from three months to a year. Is there anything else you want the judge to know this morning? Que yo siento preocupación ya que yo tengo un nieto de de cuatro años de edad. I'm very worried. I also have a four-year-old grandson. Thank you, sir. You may sit down. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I apologize. Mr. Kelly, if you'll move that microphone. Hold on, sir. The attorney, other attorney, may have a question. Mr. Kelly, nice, clear voice. Sir, where where were you outside your house when, when Mr. Rosario approached you? Este, como ustedes ven, el vehículo mío está abierto porque yo me estaba preparando para irme a trabajar. As you can see from the video, my vehicle, the door was open because I was getting ready to leave for work. And when he pulled up in his vehicle, did you get out of your car? No, yo estaba de espalda acomodando herramientas en el baúl del vehículo. No, I was facing away putting tools in the trunk of my car. Okay, and how close did Mr. Rosario get to you when he fired a shot? Como cuatro pies. Around four feet. Okay, and when and you said he had a gun, is that correct? Eh, un, un alma negra. A black gun. Okay, and did he point the gun at you? Sí. Yes. And when he fired the shot, where was he pointing the gun? El, el primer disparo lo hizo hacia el, hacia el piso, no me dio. Disparó segunda vez, me dio en la pierna. Un tercer tiro para, me apuntó para la cabeza y no me dio. Ahí fue cuando... Cuando me dio con el alma. Uh, he fired uh, the first shot to the ground. That one didn't hit me. The second shot hit him in the leg. The third shot, he was pointing at my head, but didn't hit me. And that's when he started hitting him in the head with a gun. Okay, so the first shot he pointed at the ground? No sé si lo apuntó al suelo, pero fue hacia donde disparó. I don't know if he was pointing at the floor, but that's where it hit. Okay, and did it ricochet and hit you in the leg? No, el primer disparo se perdió en el piso. No, the first shot just ended on the floor. Okay, and and what and you said he fired three times? Three times. Three times. Two times. What happened on the second shot? Where where did where where was he pointing the gun on the second shot? Ah. Uh, uh, hacia mi pierna. Uh, my legs. Okay, was he pointing at the ground or was he pointing at your legs? Oh, hacia mi pierna. No, my legs. Okay, and, and is that second shot, is that the one that hit you? Sí. Yes. Okay, I don't have any further questions. Redirect? No redirect. All right, sir, you can take the headset off now and sit down.
State, do you have another witness that needs the interpreter? Yes, Your Honor. The state calls Catherine Rivera Rivera. All right. Let's have her come up and put the headset on. Turn it around. There we go. All right, Mr. Figueroa, he's, she's got the headset on. See. She can't hear me, Your Honor. Let's go ahead and swear her in. That's right hand, please. You do solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Good morning, ma'am. Tell me your name. Catherine Rivera Rivera. Catherine Rivera Rivera. Mr. Baird, you may inquire. You can put your hand down. Mr. Rivera Rivera, you can put your hand down. Okay. Um, I want to go to the video that we just saw in court. Ms. Rivera Rivera, can you look over here? I'm going to back it up. Mr. Baird, you may inquire. Do you see yourself in that video? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Can you please tell me where in the video you are? On the right with the black shirt. Okay. I'm pointing to a person wearing shorts. Yeah, that one. Is that you? Si. Yes. Okay. When you went out there, um, what did you see happening? A mi esposo en el piso y el señor no sale con una pistola apuntándole a mi esposo. I saw my husband on the floor and I saw Mr. Rosario with a gun pointing at my husband. Y ya mi, ya mi esposo tenía la herida en la pierna botando sangre. And my husband already had the wound on his leg bleeding. Okay. When you went to, uh, to intervene, what did Mr. Rosario do? Me apuntó a mí. He pointed it at me. What did he point at you? Me apuntó con la pistola para que me echara para atrás. He pointed at me with a gun, so I will back up. Were you afraid? Sí, mucho. Yes, a lot. Before this incident, did you know Mr. Tyrone Rosario? Sí. Yes. All right. Does Does Mr. Tyrone Rosario know where you live? Sí. Yes. Does he know where your family lives? Sí. Yes. Are you concerned about your safety if he gets out of jail? Sí, mucho. Yes, a lot. Okay. La vida nos ha cambiado completamente. Our lives have completely changed. Is there anything else you want the judge to know today? La verdad que sí tenemos mucho miedo y como pasó esto sin sin una razón válida para actuar así una persona hacia otra y no tenemos recursos para poder mudarnos y lejos para uh, honestly, yes, we're very afraid as I see no reason as to why someone would act like this towards someone else and we have no resources to move away. Thank you, ma'am. The defense is going to ask you questions now. Mr. Kelly, any questions? No, sir. All right, ma'am, the defense does not have any questions. You can take the headset off and sit down. Mr. can you just put the headset back on the side? Any other need for our Spanish interpreter? Not from the state, Your Honor. Mr. Kelly? No, sir. All right, Mr. Figueroa, thank you very much. You're free to Not go. a problem, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Mr. Barrett, any other live testimony? No other live testimony, no. All right, what do you want to publish next? Uh, the next thing I'll be publishing is a portion of the interview of Mr. Tyler Rosario. I'll be starting it at about 30 minutes and 37 seconds into the interview. And Mr. Kelly, any objection? No. All right.
30, 30 
So he coughed. Oh, you don't go here and threaten me? Like, you don't really do it. He calls me a little bit of devil. You know what I'm saying? Like, call me. You know what I mean? He calls me. Oh, you don't go here. So I'm like, God, look, you know how I'm listening to work right now, bro. When I'm done, I'm going to come talk to you. You know what I'm saying? What's up? So, boom. I hang up. He calls me right back. Oh, you come over here. You're going to die. All right, I'll be right over there. I'll be right over there. And then that's when I pulled up and this happened. Did you pull out? No, the gun, is, the gun was here. Once he started, when I came out of my car, I started approaching. We started approaching by the end. Of, when I got to the end of my pickup, when I got to the end of my pickup, and he started walking towards me, you know, like you can see this guy. He was trying to eat, he was respecting me. You know what I'm saying? He started walking towards me, so I pulled my gun. You know what you want to do with that third one? You know what I mean? Like he started walking like towards me, like it didn't scare me. He started, he got real close to me. So because he wasn't scared, he shot. No, because he was coming at me. No, I didn't. Uh, it's not like I went there like, oh, I'm going to make him fear me. Like, no, bro, he started approaching me like he was doing some shot. And, and he kept going. When I pulled out the first shot, I shot the ground. I shot the ground. The video was there. You can see it. I let off two, three shots. You know what I'm saying? I let off three shots. The first shot, I shot the ground. And he kind of like, but he said he kept going towards me. The second one, we were right where he basically where he is. And I shot again. And he kept coming. He kept coming. I had no intention of lashing. But I just figured if I shoot him, he's going to run off and throw a lot of But no, I think he wasn't having it. That is the portion of the video I intend to publish. I don't know if defense is requesting more of the video. No objection. OK. Next. And Your Honor, at this time, um, I'm going to present the court with the affidavits that I referenced earlier. These are affidavits of Deputy Mesquita, Deputy Wilkie, Deputy Lorenzano, Deputy Vega, Deputy Martinez Irizarry, Deputy Martinez. A report from Alyssa McLaughlin from the FDLE. Sworn statements by Joseph Rivera. Um, a witness, uh, Andrea Pino Rivera. A witness, uh, Robert Bailey. Witness uh, Rivera Rivera. And then also photographs that I referenced earlier. These have been provided all in discovery. Any objection, Mr. Kelly? No, sir. It will be received as states composite one. Mr. Barrett, let me ask you this. You listed a number of statements from deputies. If you want to summarize the deputy statements, what are they going to tell me? They're going to confirm the, the testimony that you've heard from the victims in the case. It will further elaborate on the interview. It'll also discuss, um, there's photos that I'm presenting to the court. The photos, in addition to the photos from the scene, show photos of where the defendant hid the gun and how he tried to hide the gun and tampering with the evidence. Um, and I believe that goes to consciousness of guilt. So that would also be included in the deputy's reports. Okay.
All right, the court has reviewed the exhibit, composite exhibit submitted by the state. State any additional evidence? No, Your Honor, just argument. Mr. Kelly, do you want to offer any evidence at this proceeding? No, sir. Okay. So, uh, state it's your motion, your burden. Go ahead and give me your argument. Yes, sir. Um, in accordance with what I filed in my motion for pretrial detention, I think I laid out my argument succinctly. There's four things that the uh, court must find for the court to order pretrial detention in this case. One, that the defendant is charged with a dangerous crime. Um, here, the defendant is charged with one, two, three, four, five enumerated dangerous crimes. So that element is met. Second, that there's a substantial probability the defendant committed these crimes. Your Honor, based on the victim's testimony, combined with the uh, written statements the court has reviewed, and of course the defendant's uh, interview that was played here in court, there is certainly a substantial probability that the defendant did commit these crimes. I think the only one, um, counts one and two, the attempted second degree murder with a firearm and the aggravated battery causing uh, great bodily harm with a firearm, the defendant seems to dispute where the defendant says, well, no, I shot at the ground. I wasn't shooting at him. But I think when you listen to a close listening of the uh, audio that was played here in court of the defendant, he clearly says that first shot was shot at the ground. Um, and then he says he shot again because the victim uh, did not retreat. The victim uh, clarified that, that portion of the incident where the victim again agreed the very first shot was at the ground, the next shot was at his leg, and the third shot went somewhere else. So I think when you look at the evidence in the light most favorable to the non or to the state here, um, which is I believe the burden on the motion for pretrial detention, that that has uh, been shown. Even if the court does not find the substantial probability that he committed the counts one and two, counts three, four, and five, the defendant admitted to uh, committing those offenses, the aggravated assault, and the video makes it very clear the defendant is committing the aggravated assault, pointing a firearm at three separate individuals. The next element is that there, uh, the factual circumstances of the crime indicate, indicate a disregard for the safety of the community. Your Honor, as the defendant said in his interview, this was a dispute over some video games. This was uh, something very trivial and minor, and the defendant, rather than calling not law enforcement to aid him in recovering his video games or a lawyer to aid him in a civil dispute, the defendant chooses after being told, do not come here, in his words, he's told, do not come here, he goes to the victim's home with a firearm and confronts them in the front yard of their home. This did not happen in a rural area. As you can see in the video, this happened in a neighborhood, a residential street, in the middle of the day, and the defendant did indeed fire off multiple rounds on a residential street in the middle of the day. That shows a disregard for the safety of the community. Um, that shows that there is a, uh, a danger here by the defendant. Um, among the factual circumstances of the crime indicated disregard for safety community are the defendant committed the offense following the dispute of the video game. Um, the defendant went to the victim's home to confront the victims while armed with a firearm. He fired multiple shots in a residential neighborhood and he indeed did shoot the victim once and also pistol whipped the victim with the firearm. When other people tried to stop this attack, he then proceeded to point the gun at those individuals who were trying to stop the attack. Your Honor, the defendant did commit these offenses by substantial probability. That's the state's burden today. He does pose a danger to the community. The victims are afraid. They say they have nowhere else to move. They can't just afford to move their home. The defendant has known them by his admission for some time, that he knows where they live, the victims are afraid, the court should order pretrial detention. Mr. Kelly, argument in opposition? Judge, no argument at this time. All right, I'm gonna grant the motion for pretrial detention uh, for the following reasons. Uh, number one, re regardless of the uh, defendant's explanation, even if I accepted the defendant's explanations as undercutting evidence on counts one and two, the defendant's own admissions uh, clearly establish in the court's mind counts three, four, and five, which are enumerated offenses. 
the defendant initially uh, lied to law enforcement about anything taking place. He only admitted to something taking place after he was shown effectively incontrovertible evidence that he was present and the incident took place. He then explained that he went to the home because his life had been threatened if he came to the home. So even if the defense were to suggest that somehow his use of the firearm was a act of self-defense, I don't believe he can create the circumstances that then necessitate the use of the firearm. And I'm not sure that the evidence would support the use of deadly force. Even if he had a self-defense claim that he was about to be battered, I'm not sure there was evidence that would justify the use of deadly force under those circumstances. I do find, uh, I'll make sure I'm announcing this clearly, uh, there is a substantial probability the defendant has committed the crime. Uh, I do agree with the assertion that the factual circumstances indicate disregard for the safety of the community. Again, he went to a home where he had been specifically warned not to come. He armed himself immediately upon arrival. He, at one point, it's unclear. At one point, it sounded like he said he was not afraid. Um, that may, may change, or a closer listening might uh, contradict that. But clearly, he came out, he engaged in a confrontation. Even on his own explanation, he discharged the firearm into the ground, which in, in those circumstances did create a substantial risk to the safety of the community. And I don't believe there are any conditions of release, given my understanding of the facts of the case and the defendant's thought process that led him to these choices that would protect the community. Therefore, I believe all the elements to support pretrial detention have been met, and I believe that the, there are no conditions of release that would uh, reasonably protect the community. Therefore, I'm granting the motion for pretrial detention. The defendant will remain in custody until disposition of the case. While we're here, do we have... Well, number one, the amended information in this case was filed on May 22nd. Mr. Kelly, do you want to enter a, a plea of not guilty as to the amended information? Yes, sir. All right. So we'll go ahead and treat it as arraignment as well and enter pleas of not guilty on all seven counts. Next, we currently have pretrial conference set for July 28th and August periods, uh, trial period starting August 10th. Do you all want to leave the case for those dates at this point in time? I'm going to need more time than that, Judge. Mr. Baird, uh, so are you requesting a continuance at this time? Yes, sir. Mr. Baird, any objection to this case being continued? I have no objection. Okay. Um, if I set this case, for October 7th, or excuse me, October 6th pretrial, do y'all think that's sufficient time to know which direction the case is going? Judge, I'll do my best with depositions and stuff that we have to do. Have, have depositions started to take place now? We are doing depositions at this time um, via video conference. My understanding is they're trying to set up a way for us to do it uh, in person if we have to, but at this time we're only doing it via video conference, and I think the defense has to consent to uh, non-law enforcement doing it that way. So it's it's touch and go. Mr. Baird, if I if I continued uh, this case to the November 10th pretrial, do you have any objection? I have no objection. Mr. Uh, Rosario is, er, is going to be in uh, custody until then. So, I mean, I think I have no objection. It would be up to the defense. Mr. Kelly, do you think November 10th is a more reasonable uh, that's pretrial date? Okay. Now, practically, uh, the first week of that trial period is the week before Thanksgiving, right, and then the the next two weeks in December. So I'm, I'm not sure what jury trials are going to look like. Uh, hopefully, by then we'll have done a few and we'll have a better handle on how they're going to work. But those, it's always a challenge, at least. 
trying to say this the right way. I've been ready and willing to try cases in the month of December my entire time on the bench. I'm not sure I've ever actually got the state in defense to try a case in the month of December. So not through me discouraging it, it just seems like for whatever reason, there's some unwritten rule that uh, once Thanksgiving arrives, the state and defense are off until January. Yeah, not that they're not doing anything, but they're not trying cases in that window. So uh, I'm willing to do it. Um, I'll, just, I'll just leave it there. So court members reflect that Mr. Kelly's made an or tennis motion to continue. I've granted it. Uh, Pre-trial conference is uh, November 10th. Trial period starts Monday, November 23rd. Anything else we can do on Mr. Rosario's case at this time? Not from the state. Nothing from the defense. Okay. That's the order of the court in this matter. I believe that is the court's docket for the day. Uh, Osceola Jail, do you have anyone else out there waiting to talk to me? No, sir. All right. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you. And Madam Clerk, anything else? So. All right. We're in recess. Thank you, Jeff. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Judge Epperson. We're here for initial appearances. Uh, I know the video has been played explaining the purpose of this hearing, so we'll just get started. I'll have individuals uh, put their names on the record from the Public Defender's Office. Ben King from the Public Defender's Office, Your Honor. From the State Attorney's Office. Maybe out with the State, Your Honor. Last name again? Yao. And uh, from PTR? Officer Ray Okendo. All right, thank you. All right, we'll get started. When I call your name, just come directly to the podium. We'll begin with Michael Hernandez Rivera. Hello, sir. Uh, no, he's out of county, so he didn't. Okay. We also had a local, but um, all right, Mr. Hernandez Rivera, uh, you've been arrested on a um, an on-view violation of probation. You're on probation in Polk County in case 2018-CF-2009. Um, Polk County is a contiguous county, and therefore uh, I'm going to give Polk County 24 hours to pick you up on this um, on-view violation. Also, there is an Osceola County case, however, in 2019, and then 2123, you're out on bond in that matter, and the court finds that you violated the conditions of release. And so uh, your bond will be revoked in that case and you'll be held on a zero bond in 19MM2123. Since that's an Osceola County case, I'll make a provisional appointment at the Public Defender's Office for you. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Judge, the defendant has a second case that he's out on bond, 19CF3316, charges of escape during transport a resistant officer without violence. Okay, I did, okay, just a moment. 19 CF 3316. Correct, Judge. All right, um, you said he's out on bond? Uh, that is correct, Judge. Yes, his, his bond was paid on. Okay. Uh, likewise, then, in 2019, CF-3316, uh, bond will be revoked in that matter, and I'll uh, provisionally appoint the public defender to represent you. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Your Honor, can I get the misdemeanor case number again, 2019 mm uh, It's referenced in the police report as, uh, just, just a moment, 19MM2123. I, I see it. Thank you. All right. Jamil LaBoy. PD approved. Public defender appointed. Hello, Mr. LaBoy. Good. You've been arrested on a violation, or I'm sorry, a bench warrant for failing to appear for a violation of probation sentencing. Judge Arendis is the uh, judge in that division. Set bond at $4,999. Uh, that is your bond amount. Public defender has been appointed, and your next court date will be announced. Next court date, June 11th, in courtroom 4 E at 8 30 a.m. I can't quite hear you there, Mr. King. Oh, sorry. The microphone's still here. Don't work. Um, 
uh, he wanted to know what the violation of probation affidavit alleges his alleged uh, violations were. If well, since that. this was a failure to appear to sentencing and not in an arraignment or okay. an initial appearance, I don't I don't have the substance okay. of it. I, I'm not going to dig for it, but uh, I. Uh, Your Honor, that's sufficient for me to know yeah. what's going on in the case. Uh, I'll explain it to him. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Marino. PD approved. Public defender appointed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Marino. Um, I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for the listed charges before determining bond amounts and conditions, though. Mr. Kendo, history? The defendant has criminal history going back to 2013, charges of grand theft, petty theft, driving with license suspended. He is out on bond on an Osceola case, uh, 20 CT 772, uh, for a driving with license suspended subsequent offense. Uh, this new arrest will violate that bond. He is also uh, out on bond. Uh, on charges of aggravated battery on a pregnant woman, char uh, case 20 CF 871, and aggravated stalking, 20 CF 844. But this new arrest will not violate uh, these bonds as it predates uh, these two offenses. All right, thank you. This is, this is the same, uh, oh, I'm sorry, but yeah. this is the same thing I did in March. It's just popping up through KPD now. Okay, yeah, I'll address that. I, okay, sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, so the state attorney's office has actually filed a two-count information uh, in count one, aggravated battery upon a pregnant person for an offense date, as you indicate, of March 13th of 2020, and then count two is an allegation of false imprisonment. Having reviewed the, um, the underlying uh, factual basis for that charge, I will set you a bond in the amount of $2,500 on count one, that's the aggravated battery, $1,000 on count two, should you make bond, uh, you're to have no contact whatsoever with Norlees Antenna Glory. You're not to return to 2910 Boat Dock Road in Kissimmee. Uh, you... uh, sir, that's, that's my house. She doesn't live there. She lives in Pennsylvania. Okay. Well, for now, you cannot return to that location. Your attorney can seek a modification of this, all right? But uh, for now, you cannot return uh, to that location. I will grant an assist order with the assistance of the Sheriff's Office for acquiring personal belongings such as toiletries, clothing, tools of trade. You can talk to your lawyer about getting that modified. All right, you're not to possess or consume any alcoholic beverages. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Just one moment. Your bond will be revoked in case 20CT772 based on probable cause for a new law violation uh, because this uh, postdates the date the bond was uh, posted in that case. That's 20CT772. It'll be a zero bond on that particular case. Your Honor, if I may. Yes. Uh, due to the facts of this case, as well as the facts from the surrounding cases involving the same victim, the state is also requesting that a GPS monitor be added to his condition. Unfortunately, Judge, he doesn't qualify for pretrial release. Being out on bond, uh, GPS uh, monitoring will be, uh, will not be uh, possible, not without pretrial release supervision. Right. All right, it's kind of a, an odd, situation where sometimes those most appropriate for uh, that type of uh, monitoring don't qualify. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I respect the request. I'm going to keep the order as it's been put. No contact, however, with Ms. Norley's Antonic Glory uh, means none. No third-party communications, no emails, no text messages. I understand your concern about the residents. Again, you'll need to talk to your lawyer. Uh, I can only base my decisions on the information I have before me that's been sworn to. And sometimes there's a larger picture that uh, the court's not aware of. But for now, those are the orders that you'd have to comply with. Your next court date's as follows. June 9th in courtroom 5 a 8.45 a.m. Um, Thank you. I have a question, Your Honor. So am I able to bond out today? No. Uh, because there's a zero bond on this traffic. You have a bond on the case that uh, the aggravated battery and the false imprisonment, but your bond's been revoked on the traffic case. You have a zero bond on that case because of probable cause of another law violation. All right. Micah Eubanks. PD approved. Public defender appointed. All right, hello, Mr. Eubanks. Uh, I have reviewed the police report and find probable cause for driving under the influence uh, before bond determination and conditions. Mr. Okindo? Uh, this defendant has no prior local 
criminal history has one arrest out of the state of Louisiana back in 2014, charge of DUI, a careless operation of a motor vehicle and possession of alcohol in a motor vehicle. Uh, this position is unknown, but he does meet criteria for direct PTR. All right, Mr. Eubanks, I'm gonna place you on pretrial release supervision. As a condition of your release, you must not possess or consume any alcoholic beverages. You may not, may not go to any bars and you'd be subject to random alcohol testing. Make sure that you comply with those, otherwise you could end up sitting uh, in jail waiting on this uh, case to roll through court on a zero bond. So just make sure you uh, comply with that. You'll be released again straight to pretrial release supervision. Next court date as follows. July 13th in courtroom 5B at 8.30 a.m. Thank you. I'm just chunking those over there. Oh, I'm okay. McKelly, uh, McCauley, Jefferson Street. PD approved. Um, actually, Michaela, Michaela. Did, did the alleged victim make it to the uh, courthouse? They were here at the jail, and then they were going to drive there. Yes, the alleged victim will be entering the courtroom momentarily. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, just a moment. All right, sir, uh, if you could come over to the podium there. Could you please state your name? You Shaquille Truitt. Okay, Mr. Shaquille Truitt is in the courtroom, and he can hear and see what's taking place. You can look on the screen there and see uh, Michaela. I'll come back to you in just a moment, uh, Mr. Truitt. Uh, public defender in this case Point. is appointed to rep uh, represent the defendant. I have reviewed the police report based upon the probable cause standard that's to be applied today. I find probable cause. Uh, Mr. Kendo, history? Uh, she has no prior criminal history, Judge. All right. Um, now, Mr. Uh, Truitt, as the alleged victim in this case, you have the right to be heard today. It's not really an opportunity to talk about all the facts of the case, but um, whether or not you want to give the court any input as to any conditions of release or any other circumstance. Uh, did you want to say something today? Can you, what you say again? Tell you what, if you'll raise your right hand to be sworn... Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Okay, you can put your hand down. Since you're the alleged victim in the case, you have the right to speak to the court today. What would you like to say, if anything? I'm just trying, I'm just trying to get us back home. That's all I'm... Okay. Any questions from the state or defense? He, uh, if you... No questions from the state, Your Honor. A uh, few questions, Your Honor. Uh, thank you uh, for coming to the courthouse, Mr. Truitt. A uh, couple questions for you. Uh, you say you just want to get us back home, is what you just said, right? Right. Okay, that's because you're here on vacation, is that correct? Yeah, we was, yes, sir. Okay, uh, where are you coming from? Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, okay. Um, did you guys, how'd you guys get here? We drove. You drove, you drove together? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. do you have any way to get back? You said what now? Uh, how are you getting back? I'm uh, driving back. Okay. We are in room. Uh, in the same car? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you both take turns driving? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, are you worried about having her in the car with you? Not at all. Do you want to have her in the car with you? Yes, I do. Do you want her to come back to your house in Columbus, Ohio? Most definitely. Okay. Are you afraid of her in any way? Not at all. Uh, do you fear that she might uh, strike you or touch you in a way that you don't want to be touched? No, sir. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Is there any way for her to get back to Ohio other than coming with you? No, sir. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask you just a few financial qu uh, questions to see if there's a way for her to get back. Uh, are you got like uh, what's your financial situation like? Are you employed? Uh, not at this moment. Okay. Uh, so you don't have a way to pay for her to get back if she didn't just ride with you? No, sir. Okay. Um, Hold on. Um, 
Uh, okay, so if you guys rode back and you guys were to have a problem together, what would you do? Um, okay. I don't see us having a problem, but we always handle our problems. We talk it out, but I don't see us having a problem going back. If you felt uh, threatened or if she uh, uh, sh struck you in any way, would you call the police? Um, I just want to let no. you know that, uh, you know, it's your duty to let law enforcement officers know if she's to break the law, if she's released. If you could get a no hostile contact order and you guys get hostile, if it's, it's your duty it's to let police officers life, know. Would life threatening. Life threatening, I would. Okay. All right, this is an opportunity to ask questions rather than uh, explain duties. Okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure there's no way for her to get back uh, other than them driving together. So I just want to see if he objected. To a no hostile contact order. All right. Do you object to a? a do you want to have contact with her, sir? Yes. Okay. Do you want her to ride back with you? Yes, sir. You want her to live with you? Yes, sir. Okay, that's all, Your Honor. Thank you for uh, allowing me to inquire. Okay. In light of those responses, any questions, Mr. Yao? Uh, just two questions, Your Honor. Yes, sir. sir, were you the one that called on June first, twenty twenty? No. And you said that if, if you felt like you were threatened and your life was threatened by Miss Jefferson Street, you would call the police? Yes, your life threatened. Yes. And you're saying that right now you you wouldn't feel threatened by her. Is that correct? No, no, no. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. And just to refresh my recollection, you said there was no criminal history. Is that right, Mr. Okendo? No prior criminal history, Judge. All right. I know what you're requesting uh, from your questioning, Mr. King, but um, if, in order for me to consider granting that request, can you explain why um, your client, if she's so inclined to explain why she's wearing a sling there, what's that all about? Okay, uh, tell the judge. Yes, um, I, had, I had surgery this morning due to a cut. Um, it was an accident. Um, it was something that was grabbed out of my hand and sliced me, and I had surgery this morning. The officer took me there, and I just got back like an hour or so. Okay, all right. Okay, Ms. Jefferson, I'm going to give you a bond of $250. Should you make bond as a condition of your release or to have no hostile contact with Mr. Shaquille Truitt, no hostile contact prohibits any, obviously it prohibits any acts of violence, but it also prohibits any threats of violence or any acts of intimidation. So no hostile contact. I'm also going to order as a condition of release that you maintain a separate residence until further order of the court. Um, you also must not possess any weapons or firearms. Your next court date, Mr. Truitt, did you want to say something? Hey, um, that last statement, what you, what you said, what do you mean by that? Maintain separate residence. Mm -hmm. You can't live together. You can't live in the same home, all right? Even until, though we're on the same lease. I'm sorry? Even though we're on the same lease. like our Right, family. right. I don't care about the lease. You just can't live in the same home until further order of the court. You can have contact, non-hostile contact, but you can't live together in the same home. Okay. If that were to be violated, then uh, it, there could be a no-bond situation. All right, next court date, Madam Clerk. It's still in jail, June 11th, if I July 1st, in courtroom 4E at 8.15 a.m. All right. Did you want to order that with PTR or with no PTR? Um, We'll put pre-trial release supervision on that. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, it's eligible, right? She is eligible for pre-trial release yeah. with the monetary uh, condition, Judge. That's right. If, if still in jail, June 11th, if filed July 1st in courtroom 4E at 8.15. All right. She has a $250 bond. Next case, Samantha Pagan. CD approved. Public defender appointed.
All right. Okay, don't talk in the courtroom, please. All right, that's right. All right, uh, Ms. Is it pronounced Pagan? Yes. All right, Ms. Pagan, the public defender is appointed in this matter. I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for the list of defense uh, before determining bond and conditions. Mr. Kendo, any history? The defendant has no local criminal history, has history out of the state of Massachusetts with a 2010 arrest for assault and battery and a 2016 arrest for no vehicle registration. That is all, please. Okay, I'm going to set bond in the amount of $2,500. Should you make bond, uh, Ms. Pagan, you're to have no contact whatsoever with Ms. Kimberly Gilchrist. She's the alleged victim in the case. No contact whatsoever. Also, I'm ordering that you, that you not return to the apartment complex where this offense allegedly occurred in Poinciana, or on uh, North Poinciana Boulevard. It's the Summer Villa Apartments. Do not return to those apart that apartment complex. Your next court date as follows. Next court date on demand. Thank you. James Vila. PD approved and the Your Honor, uh, James Vila is detoxing. Oh. Okay, apparently I think his mother may be here. Um, oh. Uh, can't hear what? Okay, I apologize. Mr. King, he's in detox? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, formed. He was medical detox this morning. Okay, thank you. Um, could you relay that to Miss uh, Miss Vila that it's being reset until tomorrow because he's in detox? Yeah, thanks. It'll be set for um, one thirty, just to be safe. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Your Honor, just so you're aware, at two p.m. Um, we're being told to leave the courthouse tomorrow. Yeah, because of. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, T today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, okay. We'll set it for 1 o'clock then, just to be okay. safe. I'm, I'm going to go off record a minute. <laughs> I can't believe that's going to close our courthouse. I know, I don't understand. Gregory Limley. PD approved. When you say we're being told, was that a, uh, that I, I haven't been at my computer in the last hour or two. Is that like a, a chief judge order? No, it's just for the state attorney's office in Osceola County. We're being okay, because if the, if the chief judge hasn't ordered it, I'll be conducting business, and if the state wants to waive its appearance, they can. <laughs> All right, hello, Mr. Limley. Hello. I have reviewed the police report. I do find probable cause for disorderly intoxication. Mm -hmm. Public defenders appointed. That was not the charge. I couldn't understand you, sir. That was not charged. Disorderly intoxication. No, sir, that was not charged. Okay. The defendant is on probation in Polk County in 19 CF 4, uh, 5075. Uh, notwithstanding that this is a second degree misdemeanor, given the totality of circumstances, I am going to find an on view violation of probation in 2019 CF 5075. And uh, the defendant shall be, hold, shall be held for 24 hours to allow the contiguous county, Polk County, to decide whether or not they're going to pick up Mr. Limley on the on-view violation of probation. Um, teletype, or correction should teletype Polk County if it's not already been done concerning that. On the uh, disorderly intoxication, uh, bond will be set at uh, $250. Mr. Limley, you're not to possess or consume any alcoholic beverages or go to any bars or use any controlled substances without a prescription. And your next court date as follows. It's still in jail June 11th. It filed June 29th in courtroom 4E at 2.30 p.m. Thank you. Who love Alfonso Swan? This was a reset from the weekend. I don't know if they were able to contact the Polk County judge. I've not received any. In, I've not received any information concerning that. The defendant's been in custody since what? June second. Let's see. Since May 29th. Oh, okay. 
Does anyone have any information at all on this from uh, the adjacent county? During COVID, we were resetting them so Judge Morgan would get um, information. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure since they're going to be starting to transport um, defendants on Friday if they're still doing that or not. Okay, just a second. BOP is. Yeah, Judge Judge Morgan's going to be uh, doing IAs on Thursday for yeah. similar situations. However, I see that uh, Polk County was looks like they were teletyped. On 529, and they haven't picked him up. Defendant's going to be released on this case today. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, we're over. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, Judge, that's everyone over here. All right, have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. Well, just a minute before we cut off, uh, there is there is someone here that's uh, getting my attention. Yeah. I think we, I, I think you missed that opportunity. <laughs> Let me, but I'll go, just a minute, just a minute. Let's see. We, uh, I think we just took some people out. Do you need me to bring anyone back? Well, Mr. Marino, that's a case in which the state had already filed a formal information. I don't know if you're aware of that, a two-count information. What was the argument you were going to make? Right, the argument, Your Honor, is that I also, um, I have two reports here, if the court wanted to see. So, Mr. Marino was arrested on Friday, and then he was released on Friday. I'm sorry, let's back up one minute. If you could identify yourself for the record. Mr. Marino. Your last name again? Melida Ortega. Ms. Ortega, okay. And I, you're with the public defense? Okay. So, Your Honor, he was arrested as you indicated. And what he was at my ace for today was 20 CF 1094, where the state had already filed an information. Back in March uh, 18th of this year, he got arrested um, on case number 20 CF 844. If you read both reports, they're pretty much identical. What happened is that there was two different agencies at work. So KPD did a report, Osceola did a report. If this, I, I don't know if you would want to see both. I'll take a look. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I gave him a bond, uh, and I didn't revoke because of uh, Mr. Okendo, I think, brought that to my attention. Well, I revoked, the CT case. I, I revoked a CT case, which predated this. Right. Uh, yeah, but I didn't. Uh, he didn't revoke the felony case. Yeah. You know. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, and I would have listened. <laughs> but I've, I've set the bond amounts. I did give him a 2501 and then on the other one I gave him a... They stayed at 1000 Stated at 1000 on false imprisonment. Mm -hmm. I did, unfortunately, I, though, because of the probable cause of a new law violation, I did revoke the, uh, the other criminal matter for which he was out on bond because these offenses, March 20th, I think is the alleged offense mm -hmm. date, post-dated the right. uh, time he bonded. Yeah, and that's, that's correct. Okay. The case was in February. All right, Mr. Marino, just so you know, and I'm sure you might have heard that, you did have an attorney here uh, arguing on your behalf, Ms. Ortega, from the Public Defender's Office, okay? I'm just, uh, I'm just a little sorry. I'm just confused about the license thing because I went there um, yesterday and I drove my roommate's car who literally passed out and I just had to drive it into the neighborhood. Um, I would advise you to not say anything. Okay. Um, be able to bond out. That's all today. I understand. I'll contact you. Yeah, you, you'll need to talk to your attorney about that. All right. Thank you. Huh? How, what do I wait for now? What do you wait for? Uh, your next court date or to talk to your lawyer? All right. Ms. Marino, I'll be in contact with you. Ms. Ortega will reach out to you. She's indicated. All right. Thank you. We're in recess. Thank you, everyone.